Look at what we have here. OpenBSD 7.0 has come out of beta. It has officially released today with a whole lot of improvements. So first of all, we're getting better hardware support. OpenBSD 7.0 has RISC-V 64-bit support, and it's getting better support for Apple's M1 chips that they're building into their new MacBooks. Although it still isn't considered to really be stable enough for most end users, but I'm sure that it's gonna get there eventually. The Mac OS itself is based on BSD Unix after all. Uh, so I don't think that it's out of the realm of possibility for OpenBSD to be running natively on M1 perfectly fine one day. Uh, there's also some new user land features like the timeout utility being imported from NetBSD into OpenBSD and the implementation of reporting supplemental groups in the PS command. Also, OpenSSH 8.8 .8 is included with this release of OpenBSD by default. So I'll leave a link in the description for you to read about some of the new features because as you can see, there are quite a few of them in this release. Uh, but why don't we just go ahead and get started with downloading the ISO and installing it into a virtual machine. Uh, so to uh, download it, you wanna head over to openbsd.org forward slash ftp.html. So this is going to uh, give you a list of the different servers that you can download it from. So uh, at the top, you've got these CDNs where it's just gonna try to automatically pick whatever's closest to you. Uh, if you don't wanna use those, then there's many different uh, servers that they have all over the world. Well, actually, these are the um, HTTP servers and HTTPS. These are the FTPs uh, down here. So obviously, uh, if you're not gonna use a CDN server, you wanna just go ahead and pick whichever one is closest to your country or your locale, because then you're going to get uh, better download speeds. Uh, so we can click into uh, this directory here. And so these are uh, older versions. Of course, we want 7.0. And then you pick your architecture. Uh, so like if you were on ARM, you would want to get this one, but I am AMD 64. And then this is the one that we want here, install 70.iso. And as you can see, it's very small. It's only 529 megs. So uh, about one half of maybe a lighter weight Linux distro or one quarter of a uh, bloated Linux distro. So very lightweight, very good choice if you're looking for a minimalist uh, Unix distribution to use or you know, a Unix-like distro, uh, which is not Linux. And I'll just walk you through the settings I'm using for the VM here real quick. It's pretty straightforward. So OpenBSD and version type is uh, gonna be BSD, OpenBSD. Uh, for the system, you don't even need to use this much RAM. I'm just doing it to make it faster. Same thing with the processor. You could do a single thread if you wanted to. Um, and then uh, priority, well, hard disk is first, just so that once it's installed from the uh, optical media, I can automatically reboot into that. Um, and then of course we have the install 70.iso right here. So let's go ahead and start it up. Full screen it. Okay, and then this is uh, what it looks like when it's starting up, just loading everything. And uh, I should actually zoom this in a little bit so that you can see it better. Okay, that looks better. So now I'll walk you through the install process. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So we're going to do I to start installing. Uh, you would wanna do U if you were upgrading. Uh, keyboard layout, we'll just hit enter to use the default. Uh, your system host name, we'll call it OpenBased. And available network interfaces. So typically, uh, by default, you're going to be EM0. Uh, and of course, the uh, VLAN 0. If you have a wireless LAN, then you can go ahead and configure that here. But you probably don't have that in a VM. Uh, so we'll hit Enter to use that. And we'll hit Enter on AutoConf because we want to use DHCP for our IPv4 address. And then um, we don't need to do IPv6, so we'll just do none for that right now. 
And uh, which network interface do we want to configure? Um, well, we're not configuring any other ones, so we're done. And then we'll enter the password for our root account. There we go. And then you have the choice of starting uh, SSHD by default. I'll go ahead and hit yes for this, uh, but if you're not actually gonna be using uh, SSH on your machine, then you probably don't wanna have it running. And do you expect to run the X window system? Yes, of course, we wanna have a desktop environment. We want it to look good. Okay, and now it's asking if we want the X window system to be started by uh, Xeno DM. Uh, so this is the login manager, I guess default login manager for OpenBSD, which apparently is supposed to be more secure for running X instead of doing start X. Personally, I haven't really looked into Xeno DM, but I'll take the OpenBSD devs word for it and I'll just go ahead and install it. Uh, never had to mess with that on any of my web servers because of course I'm not using a GUI on them. Uh, and then we'll set up a user. So we'll make it Kenny. And we'll do Kenny again with a capital K for the uh, user's name. And then password for Kenny. There we go. And allow root SSH login. No, that is not a good idea. And what time zone are you in? Hey, they figured out I'm in the uh, East Coast by default. So yeah, we'll do that. Um, available disks. Yeah, so this is the disk that we're going to uh, install it to. So we'll just hit enter on that. Uh, and then we're going to use the whole disk because it's a virtual machine. We don't need to deal with partitioning. And we'll just go ahead and do the auto layout. And let's see, we have the location of the sets. Uh, I'll go ahead and do it on CD0. Uh, path name to the sets, looks good to me. I'll hit enter on that too. And uh, yeah, everything looks good here. So we'll type done. And uh, sure, we'll continue without verification. And now it's gonna go ahead and install. So this will take just a couple of minutes uh, since I'm on an SSD, but I'll pause it for you guys, not to waste your time. Okay, and for our location sets, go ahead and do uh, done again. Oh, actually I could have just hit enter on that. Uh, time appears wrong. Yeah, let's go ahead and fix my time zone or uh, fix my system time rather. Okay, and it automatically detects that I'm on a multiprocessor machine instead of a single core, single thread. And now we're all set to go ahead and reboot. And because I set my hard disk as first, I don't have to go back into the uh, virtual machine manager. It's just a 200 IQ way to use VirtualBox. All right, and then this is going to uh, go ahead and boot up the system and should probably adjust my sizing in uh, OBS because I can do a actual proper full screen now. Wait for this to uh, finish loading just so that you guys can see the login screen because pretty sure that's still going to be a bit smaller. Yeah, so this is that, um, what do they call it, uh, Xeno DM what it looks like right here. And it also comes with a uh, desktop environment. I, I, I'm not sure if XenoDM is the name uh, of the default OpenBSD uh, desktop environment. Okay, so let's go ahead and log into the X window system. That is the name of the de uh, desktop environment. Uh, Should have known that. Okay, and so we're still on um, the lower resolution. So let's do X render S1920 by 1080. And there we go. Um, so I'm not gonna do like a whole walkthrough of uh, OpenBSD, that'll be a different video. Um, but this here is basically how you navigate your virtual desktop. So you have like nine of them by default. Uh, and then of course, this is your uh, terminal. And the 
Uh, package manager, you use pkg, um, pkg add to install something, or if you want to query, you can do pkg info search htop. So like that'll let you um, check to see if a uh, package is in the repository, and of course htop is. So I'm gonna go ahead and install it just to get a quick uh, system footprint. PKG add install htop. Um, oh, of course, I have to run it as root. And we don't do sudo or sudo on BSD. We do do as. So do as pkg add install htop. So it looks like apparently I forgot that by default, a regular user does not have access to the do as command on OpenBSD. We have to edit our uh, do as.com file. In fact, it looks like we don't even have one yet. So we have to create it and uh, edit it so we can do that. So go ahead and become a root user. And then we'll vi into etsy do as.com. Well, rather we're creating it. And then we just need to type permit wheel. So this is gonna let anyone who's in the wheel group use do as, which is gonna be pretty much any standard user. Uh, we'll right quit that. And uh, we should be able to now exit back to our regular user and then rerun this command. Put on our password. And look at that, we installed htop. Bam, so we can see that our desktop is uh, pretty lightweight. We're only using 578 megs of RAM at idle, uh, but we might be able to get that to be a little bit lower if we switch window managers, because to be honest with you, I, I'm not really digging <laughs> the X window manager very much. It's like, uh, I don't know, it, it kind of looks cool. Like it's it looks sort of minimalist and retro, but I just haven't used it before. So I don't really know how to uh, navigate it. So maybe in another video, I'll show you how to install DWM onto OpenBSD. Uh, but for now, go ahead and download OpenBSD 7.0 for yourself. Tinker with it. Let me know what you think about it. And as always, like and share this video to hack the algorithm and have a great rest of your day.